Welcome to the road. Let's travel with Gary L and Gigi's Boo Plan Zebra. As you can see at reallibertymedia.com, there's, uh, you know, the, the haters can hate, but they can't keep us off the air, can they? No. <laughs> can't keep us We're off. We're here to stay. That's right. We ain't going nowhere. I'm going to tell you what I can probably do. I can probably add the intros, the extras, <laughs> whatever they are. At the, as we do the archive. So not a problem. Well, thanks for everybody in the chat room, reallibertymedia.com. Say, Gigi's Boot, how you doing? Doing fine. How about you? I'm doing all right. You sound kind of tentative. What's the matter? Well, when I talk, and I'm you're talking, it messes everything up. So I'm just going to sit over here and look at our crazy son and just wait on you to tell me to talk. Well, speaking of crazy son, well, you know when to talk is when, anyway. I know, I'm uh, kidding um, you. Uh, anyway, you know, some of the people saw the video that was made of Atticus. He trapped Atticus, Atticus 2. <laughs> he trapped oh his, the, his doppelganger. He trapped his doppelganger inside the curio cabinet. And he says oh. he's, he still hasn't given that up, has he? No. And uh, he started... If I keep him busy, he doesn't worry about it. So I said, I was doing something, folding some clothes up or something, and I said, Gary, listen at this. And he was just in front of the curio cabinet, and he was just a low growl, I'm going to get you. And I said, come on, stop. And he'll do, Gary and I listened to him. And a day he didn't do it so much, but... Last night, he was barking in fours, four barks, break, four barks. And I said, he's saying, dog, get out of my house. Dog, this is my house. Or something, you know, we figured out the words, you know, four, four words. But he just looks, and I told him, I'm afraid he was going to really just break it because he's taking his foot and knocking against it, and I had to put a chair in front of it. And I will forever have to cl clean the glass because he runs that nose up and he sees and smells and the whole nine yards. And one way I have him to behave is I just turn on the fireplace. Uh, we have an electric fireplace and I turn it on and I'll pack it and I'll say, peck on the glass. I said, look at this. And he'll run up. Then I turn on a little bit of heat. Uh, he settled for a while. Yeah, he but he is a hot mess. I don't know what we're going to do with him. Yeah. I guess keep a chair in front of it all the time. Well, I don't know. I think once things start put in there, he won't be able to see it so well. But I want to say Happy New Year. Happy New Year's Eve. Oh, a special, but it's a already New Year in the UK. I guess 37105 says it's 2018 in the UK now. Best wishes to friends, my friends from RLM. Well, Happy New Year to you as well. And it's nice for you to join in. Hopefully you're listening. If not, well, sorry. <laughs> anyway. He's listening. Or he wouldn't know to say Happy New Year. Well, I don't know. He just came to the chat room and said hello. You could. It's hard to say. We have a lot of we have a lot of European listeners, actually, and, and participants at reallibertymedia.com. And what what a sad thing if you're here in the North America... If you're in North America and you don't participate in in Real Liberty Media, what does that say about you? I mean, we got people all over the world and in, in, in South America. We have some people to call in to the Freakers Ball, which is on Friday nights at Grimner Moose Girl, and they call in and they, they give reports and live reports on the on the air about what's really going on, what is actually happening, not just not the fake news, not the corporate propaganda you get the real news from people on the ground and that's a great thing at reallibertymedia.com but anyway Gigi's boo long way since it's a new year's eve party how about we start out with a with a joke what do you think go to it all righty let's see what i can find here how about this one a taxi cab driver picked up a nun you see so she gets in the cab and notices that the very handsome cab driver won't stop staring at her. She asks, asks him, why are you staring at me? And he said, I have a question to ask you, but I don't want to offend you. She answers, my son, you can't offend me. 
when you're as old as I am and have been a nun as long as I have, you get a chance to see and hear just about everything. I'm sure there's nothing you could say or ask that I would find offensive. Well, he says, I've always had a fantasy to have a nun kiss me. She responds, well, let's see what we can do about that. Number one, you have to be single. And number two, you have to be Catholic. The driver gets real excited and he says, yeah, I'm, I'm single and I'm Catholic. Okay, the nun says, pull into the next alley. The nun fulfills his fantasy with a final kiss that would make a hooker blush. But when they get back in, on the road, the cab driver starts crying. My dear child, says the nun, why are you crying? The cabbie says, forgive me, but I have sinned. I lied. I must confess. I'm married and I'm Jewish. The nun says, that's okay. My name is Kevin. I'm going to a New Year's Eve party. Hello. Oh, <laughs> man. So what do you do Terrible. about what do you do about that, Gigi's boo? I don't know. Mm -mm. <laughs> I don't know at all. Ooh, Lord. I don't know. That'd be that'd be kind of a sticky situation. I'm uh, uh, figuratively speaking, of course. <laughs> what do you think? Sure enough. Well, sure enough. Okay, I think actually, being New Year's Day, a lot of people have special meals that they prepare. And we're certainly no different. And um, you want to tell the folks about what we typically have on New Year's Day and why that is the case? Well, I got an article that gives a whole different outlook on why we eat these two things. But the South is notorious to eating black-eyed peas and collards. Or it might be turnip grained. It'd be some kind of a grain. And uh, my grandmother... You sat down at the table and you ate it. She was superstitious about that. You ate them peas. You ate those greens. And you had to eat a lot of it so you'd have money through the year. She believed that. And that's typical what we, we eat a little cornbread along with it. And sometimes we'll, all the time, basically we'll have a little hog jowl or salt pork fat back. But there's uh, a reason why the South, they say, started eating black-eyed peas to be the lucky New Year meal. Um, most Southern people, I tell you, it dated back pre-Civil War or to the Civil War. And they were black-eyed peas and purple hull peas were considered animal food for the cattle. And so when General Sherman marched through the South with his Union troops, of course, they raided all the homes, took all the food, because they had been eating hardtack most of the time. And um, they took everything except the peas and salted pork. And so the Confederates considered themselves lucky to be left with those meager supplies and survive that winter. So peas became a symbol of luck. Black-eyed peas were also given to slaves. And as with most traditional New Year's foods, let's face it, a lot of stuff we eat on New Year's, and not only on New Year's, but through the, through the year is typically what people call soul food. Now, one explanation of the superstition says the black-eyed peas were all that the southern slaves had to celebrate with on the first day of January 1863. Now, what were they celebrating? That was the day of the emancipation propagation. And it went into effect that very day. From then on, peas were always eaten on the first day of January. Others say that since the South has generally always been a place for farming, black-eyed peas are just a good thing to celebrate with in the winter. Not many crops grow this time of year, but black-eyed peas will hold up well. They were cheap. It just made sense to eat them. And it goes in, the, how do you eat your peas? And every family is going to differ on this, but predominantly it's going to be the same. 
cooking method. You'll put them in a pot. You will boil them. And you're going to put your little bit of fat back in it. And if you don't want fat back in it, you fry your fat back on the side and eat it along with meal. Now, some people say that you put a dime or a penny in the pot before you serve them. And whoever gets the, the, the coin in their portion, they'll have a real lucky and prosperous year. A lot of people say you got to eat 365 peas on New Year's Day. If you get any less, you won't be lucky. And I guess on leap years, you had to eat an extra one. If you eat more than 365 peas, it turns out those extra days turn into bad luck. And some people say you should leave one pea in your plate to share your luck with someone else. Uh, more of the humbleness that pea seems to represent. Some people say if you don't eat every pea on your plate, your luck will end. It's also been said if you eat only black peas and skip the pork, collard greens, and their compliments, the luck won't stick. So you got to eat it all together. Now, my grandmother said your peas was your pocket change and your collards were your, uh, your greenbacks. So she would literally force your mouth open and make you eat a meal of it. You had to eat it. So we didn't put a penny in it or a dime or anything like that. We just ate. Now, hog jowl. I don't know how many of y'all out there know what hog jowl is, but hog jowl is just what it says. It's the cheek of the hog, the jowl up under the, the neck. And it tastes and cooks similar to a thick cut bacon. It's real tough. It's usually typically smoked and cured. Hog jowl is used to season beans and peas or fried and eaten like bacon. I don't like hog jowls better as well as I like sow belly. Uh, that's just the belly of the pig, the fat part of the pig. Um, that's what we call uh, fat back. Oh, God, that stuff is so good. My granddaddy could fry it. Lord have mercy, it was good. Now, on New Year's Day, hog jaws are traditionally eaten in the South to ensure health, prosperity, and progress. South isn't the only place that eats pork on New Year's Day. All over the world, people using marzipan pigs to decorate their tables, partaking in pig's feet, pork sausage, roast suckling pig, or pork dumplings. We're just the only one who puts so much faith in, in, in the cuts of the meat, the jowl and the, and the fat back. Hogs and pigs have long been a symbol of prosperity and gluttony. It's why we hear someone say is being a pig when they take more than their share. <clears throat> Some cultures believe that the bigger the pig you eat on New Year's, the bigger your wallet will be in the coming year. So the fatter the pig, the fatter your wallet. You split and pit roasted pigs are popular in your meals. Now, we don't do that in this area. <clears throat> in the south and other poor areas, pigs were considered symbolic of both health and wealth because families could eat for the entire winter on the fatty meat of one pig produced. Having pork can mean the difference between life and death in a really cold winter. Pigs have also long symbolized progress. A pig can't turn its head to look back without turning completely around. So it's believed that pigs are always looking to the future. And they fit per perfectly in with other New Year's celebrations. Why well, hog jowls? The short answer is that it's cured pork because it's winter time. And cured Hog jowl stores well for long periods during the month. True pork would be the one meat that was accessible. Plus, it goes well with the peas and the collards. Um, it's a good thing people who made these superstitions up didn't come up with something like snails, cornbread, black eyed peas. I don't think that would have caught on. <laughs> how do you how do you cook your jowl? Some people season. Um, most people in the South will say that they take and they love to fry it. And that's the way I like it. 
I love it fried crispy and it's really tasty. You can get it in the in the the the, the, the right the, you know in the grocery store if you look. And I don't know about other areas because I don't think it's popular. But you go anywhere in the South, you are gonna find fat back sow belly, hog jaw, uh, stricken meat. They call it different things. Collard greens. Well, here in the South, collard greens and cornbread bring the money on New Year's Day. It's actually um, cabbage that is the king green around most of the world for New, Year, New Year's meals. Cabbage is a late crop and would be available this time of year. Collard greens are a late crop too, but they're mostly grown in the South. And traditionally, cabbage was picked and turned into sauerkraut. Sauerkraut, a fermented product, would just be ready to eat around New Year's Day. Cabbage and collard greens both represent green money. And it's eaten for um, for health benefits, too. Cabbage was eaten by everyone from Caesar to the Egyptians to aid in digestion and for nutrition, later for the prevention of scurvy. Aristotle, the philosopher, ate cabbage before drinking alcohol to keep the wine from fuddling his prudent academic head. And uh, collard greens uh, aren't too far off from what Caesar would eat. And it's, it's, gr- and it's grown here in late in the fall. Now, let me tell you a little bit about collards. My granddaddy grew collards every year. Those plants would come up and they will be as green as they can be and stay green even when you get a hard freeze or icing. And he said that his mother had sent him out to the garden to cut a, cut a collard head. And collards are not really good until they've had ice on them. Now, I know that doesn't make sense, but that's that that's really true. Now let me go on a little bit about hogs. Woo! They would have hog killing. And I'm gonna tell you something. It's something about them swine holler, and I can't take it. And when they would go to kill it, we'd usually be up in way up in the, in the mountains, and we'd bring our share home, you know. But it would be a usually a two all day two or two day all day thing. You never kill the hog till the water froze in puddles on the ground two days running. Then it was time to kill hogs. And people would wonder where I was, and they'd say, Brenna's hit the side of the mountain because I couldn't stand to hear them pigs holler. And they know when they're going to be shot. You know, they just line, you know, they line them up, and they know they, they can smell the blood and everything. And I'd have my fingers in my ears, and I'd just be singing or talking or doing anything until somebody come up on the hill and pried my fingers out of my ears and said, it's over, come on down, we need you to help. Now, I could help with it after it was over with. I cannot stand to hear, Woo, I get woozy when I think about them swine hollering. That's a, that's a hard time. But anyway, cornbread also is 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 real prominent here in, here in the South. And... You'll find people who do corn muffins, and they'll put a little sugar in it. Uh, A real southerner don't like sweet cornbread. We like our cornbread with just cornmeal, whatever it is that we need to make it rise, and a little little baking powder and a little baking soda, and we stir it up, mix it up with some buttermilk, put it in a cast iron skillet, and we bake it, and then we crumble it up. And that's about what Gary and I are going to have for dinner tomorrow. And it's it's good stuff. Y'all give it a try. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you can't get any better than that. That's good stuff. Thank you, Gigi's Boo, for sharing all that wonderful information. And you have to realize, not everyone who listens is at all familiar with this kind of cuisine. <laughs> but your uh, your comment about snails is well taken. I uh, yeah, I see that I'm answering. <laughs> oh boy, yeah, kind of, kind of don't know what to do. Well, on on the concept of food, though, 
You know, it's the winter. It's cold here, by the way. It is cold. Oh, yes, it is. And I don't know how cold it is for all those folks in the chat room, but we did not say hello. So let's <laughs> say hello to everyone out there. Grimder, Kate, Asmo, Beth C, Chalstony, Circle, Chloe, Dakota, a free and slave, Graham Z, Java Doctor, Iguana Taco, Meister Brow, Paul Bunyan, Rain, Rob Works, Trust No One, Vinny, Woodman, hey, Woodman, haven't seen him in a while, Be Beetle is here, Behind the Woodshed, there's Hal, Dima Frumpy, Guest 37105 from the UK, Kozu, Moe, Nenson Dubois, Poxified, Ponsaw Sock, Puppet, Teddy and the Phantom, and actually if you listen to the Grammy Mary's show, uh, the Phantom did a smack bang, ding dong, beat up, <laughs> great, uh, intro for Grammy Mary's show, and uh, anybody who hasn't caught that need to check it out. It's very, very good. But during the, this time of year, lots of people end up with the sickies, don't they, Gigi Boo? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing, well, there are lots of remedies for that, There's, but here's one that's actually something I found in Healthy Lifestyle, and it sounds wonderful. I have to hang on to this recipe. And it's called Ancient Ginger and Garlic Soup Recipe. And it says it beats the flu, cold, excess mucus, and sinus infection. Speaking of snails. <laughs> mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, here's a recipe. I'm not going to, uh, you know, obviously I'm not going to give you the blow by blow, but we'll drop it into the chat room. You can share it with folks that, who might be ailing. It does, in, it does include garlic and onions and chicken broth and 50 grams of grated root ginger. Or you can finely slice it too. And last of not least, a finely diced hot or medium hot chili pepper. And of course, if you want to, you can throw mushrooms in for that's your preference. But here's a, here's a nice little recipe for a... Uh, for a sicky soup, I guess you'd say. And we'll throw, uh, drop that in the chat for everybody to see. So, what about the n top news store? I thought about uh, lots of different things to do here tonight. Now, how about some of the top weird news stories of 2017? <laughs> yeah, we have some really uh, oddball stories. Here's a story that occurred in, uh, in Dundalk, Maryland, which really isn't too far from Baltimore. But it turns out that a, a man took a bite out of a sandwich and it led him to barricade himself in the house. It sounded like something from the X-Files. It was one of those haunted sandwiches. It's a stolen, mm -hmm. a stolen bite out of his grilled cheese sandwich led a Maryland man to fire a shot inside his house and barricade himself for hours. Ooh, man, that's unbelievable. And we have to answer a question here before I can c continue. <laughs> there we go. Baltimore County Police Spokesman Sean Vinson says the dispute began about 5 p.m. Sunday as a at a Dund Dundalk home, he says the man was eating with his wife and daughter and became angry when one of them took a bite from his sandwich. It prompted him to fire a shot inside the house. The wife and daughter fled, but the man barricaded himself, but peacefully surrendered shortly before 9 p.m. that night, and no one was injured. He said he was charged with attempted murder and other offenses. And of course, in Maryland, you can imagine the People's Republic of Maryland the way they are. Online court records don't list a lawyer for him. And that occurred, uh, it doesn't say exactly when it occurred. Oh, well. So at some time last year, at any rate, this is when this happened. Now, what's another one? Ah, oh, this is a... Strange looking one, Gigi's boo. It says a woman nearly carjacked after stopping for a dummy in the road. Now I can see where this could be set up. Mm hmm. It certainly could be. Actually, this happened uh, January 25th, 2017. 
in Newport, North Carolina, not too far away, actually. The sheriff's office said a woman narrowly escaped being carjacked after spotting what she thought was a child sitting in the middle of the road in the dark of night. It turned out to be a dummy dressed in children's clothing, and as the woman slowed her car, two men wearing dark hoodies approached and pulled on her door handles. She sped away for help as the suspects fled, according to the sheriff's office in Carteret County, North Carolina. Gigi's boo, and I have to pick on you for a minute. You had a similar event, didn't you? Now, wait a minute. I'm sorry you were breaking up. What, Gary? Well. <laughs> I'm sorry it broke up. I, did you hear the story? Yes. Okay, you had a similar event, didn't you? Oh, uh, mm. <laughs> Well, I had a event. I don't think it's a sil similar event, but I had an event, and I think you're talking about the 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 uh, post office thing. No, I was talking about somebody coming up trying to open your car doors. The story I was telling. Oh no, uh, -uh. let's not talk about that. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Joggers and bras, panties and briefs raise money for sick kids. It's February 18th, 2017 in Philadelphia, the city of, uh, oh, I guess we can say brotherly love or cho you choose the gender love now or whatever. Some joggers weren't joking when they said they were going out for a brief run. In briefs, boxers, bras, and bloomers, they ran three-quarters of a mile in a Valentine's Day-related charity event benefiting sick children. Saturday's annual Cupid's Under Run featured 1,000 people in their underwear and little else, except for maybe some body-painted hearts, angels, and Cupid arrows on their chests. Oh, God. Participants, some of whom shaved hearts into their chest hair, ran through the streets near the city's sports stadiums. Mm -hmm. Sisters Melissa Tami Tami um, Tamimi <laughs> in gray panties and matching sports bra and Sophia Tamimi in black panties and a gray lacy bra had no problem mentioning their unmentionables. Melissa says, I'm about as comfortable as you could be running in underwear. Runner Jeff Eckert, who's 30 years old, said he was diagnosed with neurofibromatosis, also called NF, when he was five years old. He said he was participating in the undie run wearing Superman boxer shorts to help raise money and awareness. And that's that's an interesting story, don't you think, Gigi's boo? Mm. I don't think anybody will wear, run naked, wear the JJ hats, um, scream at the sky, um, for any cause. Nobody wants to see somebody naked running with hearts all over them to raise money. I mean, that's stupid. Okay. Well, here in February 22nd of this year still, Ohio policeman answers a girl's request for math homework help. Hmm. <laughs> Could be interesting. The mother of a 10-year-old Ohio girl who messaged police on Facebook for help with math homework says the responding officer's engaging approach is what counts, though his math was a little off. Molly Draper's daughter, Lena, recently messaged Mar Marion police about equations involving addition of numbers in parentheses as well as multiplication. Lieutenant B.J. Gruber replied, he walked the fifth grader through correctly solving one problem but slipped up on another one, suggesting addition and multiplication steps in the wrong order. Now, that, that brings up an interesting point. For You see a lot of these little... Uh, I guess you say quizzes or tests or whatever. And they always have these math problems set out. And, of course, you have to pick the right answer. But you got to remember that order of operations, because that's where they try to mess with your mind. And that's something to keep in mind if you're involved, if you're interested at all in those sorts of things. Uh, let's see. Here's an interesting story, Judy's Boo, March 7th of this year. In St. Paul, Minnesota, hello, close to Moose Girl at any rate, a long-haul semi-trailer dr 
driver from Minnesota says he felt like a bad cat dad when he had to leave his poor little kitty cat behind at a rest stop in Ohio. It seems that Percy the cat jumped out of a window of the 18-wheeler while Paul Robertson was asleep. The trucker searched at length for Percy, but had to make a delivery deadline in Indiana. So Robertson drove 400 miles through rain and snow, feeling horrible about having lost Percy. Robertson said when he finally reached a destination, he spotted what he thought was a stray cat near his truck. A closer look revealed the cat was Percy. He said he somehow survived the long ride clinging to the truck's undercarriage. Woo! Woo! What do you think about that, Gigi Boo? Woo! Woo! Let's see. A man got a two-cent check from government, and he doesn't know why he did in Lynn, Massachusetts. Massachusetts, or whatever. He, uh... He has a ready answer when asked for his two cents worth. His present, he presents a check he got from the government. Bruce Rideout of Lynn tells the Daily Item he got a two cent check from the U.S. Treasury a couple of days ago and has been carrying it around and showing his friends ever since. And Benny's not sure why he got the check and he's not planning on asking why. The 79 year old Air Force veteran and Lynn and Lynn Water and Sewer Commission retiree had already received his income tax refund and his monthly pension. But he's not going to cash the check. He's just going to hang on to it and have a frame made. The cost of the frame? More than $82. I got one for you on that. All right, go ahead. Mother kept getting a bill, and it was from some company, and it's, and the bill came and it said it was uh, she owed z- zero balance and she was going to be turned into a credit agency. And she called them and she said, well, this is crazy. And they said, I'm sorry, we're going to turn you in. And you know what she did? She wrote a check to that company for zero amount of dollars all the way across, wrote it out in the writing, and in the memo, paid in full and signed her name and mailed it in, and they never bothered her again. Can you believe that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't, that's hard. Yeah, you can believe about anything that in that regard. That's, wow. But speaking of bears, and we seem to like to talk about bears, don't we? But it, police say in Vail, Colorado, that it really wasn't a burglary. It was just a black bear that stomped briefly on piano keys while rummaging through an apartment. The revelation came after Katie Hawley reported her Vail apartment had been disturbed while she was away on May 31st. She later later checked security footage, camera footage, and saw the bear roaming the apartment and pouncing on piano keys. Police Department Sergeant Luke Causey said the bear had climbed through an open window and helped itself to food from the freezer. And it did actually turn out to be a viral video on the internet. Unfortunately, the bear has not been heard of or seen since. Well, you reckon? (laughs) They scared it to death. Poor bear. Poor bear. Here's a good one. An oddball on August 15th up in uh, Milwaukee. Milwaukee. A Wisconsin man who doctors say came perilously close to death after accidentally shooting a nail into his heart while working on his house. Dear God. Calmly drove himself to the hospital and even parked his pickup truck in the lot before walking to the emergency room. Doug... Bergeson is ready to get back to work this week after surviving the June 25th ordeal that others might not have taken in such stride. Bergeson told the Associated Press he was working on framing in a fireplace at his house near Pestigo in northeast Wisconsin when his nail gun accidentally fired, sending a nail ricocheting off some wood and into his chest. Mm. He said, I thought it just nicked me. I looked down. I couldn't see anything. I felt okay. I wasn't worried about the injury. I couldn't feel any pressure or blood building up. 
As he tugged at his sweatshirt, Bergeson, 52, said he realized only about one inch of the three-and-a-half-inch nail was sticking out of his chest. I could see the nail. I could see the nail moving with my heartbeat. That is a, always a big tip, isn't it, Gigi's boo? Sure is. <laughs> it was kind oh, of. Oh yeah. <laughs> it was kind of twitching with every heartbeat. Now, as an aside, and you're a nurse, if if you're confronted with a similar situation like that, why should you pull that out or should you leave it in? Oh, leave it in and get to the hospital. Absolutely. Leave it in because that's probably sealing the wound. Keep that in mind as you if you ever happen to run into something like that. So it's interesting. Uh he was he, they took X rays and X rays and he was rushed by ambulance, I guess, to a different location, the Aurora Baycare Memorial or Medical Center. I offered to drive myself, but they wouldn't let me. Dr. Alexander Reutstein confirmed that the nail had hit Bergeson's heart, saying it was also one-sixteenth of an inch from a major artery. He said it was difficult to assess how deeply the nail penetrated, but the nail left bruising and a nail-sized hole. Yeah, and he actually commended Bergeson for not pulling the nail out and letting doctors handle it. He just spent two days in the hospital and has been recovering at home since then. He says he feels pretty good. I'm back to doing things carefully. It was a very awakening experience. I expect so. I guess it was. Yeah, you have to be careful of the nail guns and things like that. They're not... Uh, they're, they're, they can be dangerous if you're, if you're not uh, very careful. And remember the joke we did earlier about nuns? Well... This nun wasn't joking. No, these nuns, actually. Two women dressed as nuns try to rob a Pennsylvania bank. That's back in August in Tannersville, Pennsylvania. Police say two women dressed as nuns attempted to rob a bank in Pennsylvania's Poconos. Authorities said the women walked into Citizens Bank near Tannersville on Monday and one brandished a handgun demanding money from the teller. But they left without taking anything. Each woman was wearing a black nun's habit and veil. One woman was also wearing sunglasses. And the FBI is investigating, posting bank surveillance photos on Twitter. I wonder if they'll call Mulder and Scully on that one. Hmm. And you know, of these toll roads, Gigi Boo, you have to pay the toll... Even if you're a deer, apparently, officers stop a deer on California Bridge for toll evasion. In Oakland, Calif Dear God. <laughs> Oakland, California, August 29th, <laughs> California highway officers say they stopped a young deer on a California toll bridge for toll evasion. A photo published Tuesday by the California Highway Patrol shows the doe on the San Francisco-Oakland Bay Bridge standing in the middle of an on-ramp with a deer in the headlights look. The officer joked in a Twitter post that the fawn usually pays the toll, but today she was a buck short. Oh, <sighs> God. <laughs> Highway Patrol Officer Matthew Hamer said two officers were on patrol on the bridge early Tuesday when the deer came out of the woods on Treasure Island and walked in front of their car. He says after staring at them for a couple of minutes and long enough for the officers to snap a photo, the deer went back into the woods. So there are some of your strange and unusual stories from 2017. <laughs> Very much so. Very much so. I think so, Gigi's boo. I think so. I'm going to drop a, a link in uh, for y'all to watch. Watch this uh, song. Um, when Gary and I heard them, they're, they're local, they're from the Carolinas, really good. And there's a song that I'm going to post and you'll, you'll get to hear it. It says cornbread, butter, means and you across the table. Gary and I sing that a lot. They're, 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 it's, a, it's a good group. So y'all, y'all watch that when you get time. I just wanted to throw that in there and I know. We're going to be going off the air pretty quick, not about 10 minutes. So I want to say this. I always do a toast 
It's early, but I want to do a toast. I do the same one every year because it's so perfect. And here it goes. There are wood, there are, there are wood ships, and there are good ships, and there are ships that sail the sea. But the best ships are friendships. May they always be. I love y'all. Okay, Gary, take it over. Very nice, very nice. Well, we still have a few minutes. We started late, and uh, yeah, you're welcome, Beth. And have we haven't really paid much attention to the chat room there? Yeah, we. I did discover actually, uh, Grimnir and everyone, what part of what's going on was it seems that uh, I received a lot of updates, and some of those updates were with uh, with the firewall software. And it appears that the firewall was blocking the uh, broadcaster. First time that's ever happened. So they, they've apparently beefed up the security on the updates and didn't bother to say anything about it, of course. But when I, I did notice after moving some of the windows that there was uh, an inquiry from the firewall, do you want to allow this or not? <laughs> so I think that's what's going on. Uh, at least with the broadcaster. Uh, we'll we'll test it briefly after the show and see if that works out okay. So anyway, we've been shooting ducks in the chat room. and Yeah, let's see. The Hal shows up. So if you guys want to catch the archive, it's it's up on YouTube and it's up on reallibertymedia.com and in the, in the blogcasters. So you might definitely want to check that out. Okay. All right, Gigi Boo. Let's see. What we got? What we got? Oh, how about... All right, guys. Here's your New Year's Eve quiz. And we're going to find out about... We're going to find out about our listeners here. Now, here's what you're going to need to do. You need to either have a piece of paper and a pencil or a uh, stone tablet and a chisel, depending on what you're used to. Or you can bring up a note pad window. Ooh, you can be high tech with this, Gigi's boo. Yeah. Okay, here we go. I think everyone has... I actually had some quiz show music to run in the background. Maybe I can do that on the archive. We'll see. We'll play with it a little bit. Okay, here's some things. We'll quiz you about your memories. All right, guys? And your, your questions, there are 19 of them, so 1 through 19. Question number one. How many of you remember blackjack chewing gum? Okay, think about that a minute. Indicate your answer. Number one, if you remember blackjack chewing gum. How about number two, the wax-coated, the wax Coke-shaped bottles with colored sugar water in them? How many of you guys remember those little waxy Coke bottles? You could chew on them and you get a drink of colored sugar water. Now I'm sure many of you on number three here remember candy cigarettes. How many of you guys remember candy cigarettes? Number four. How about soda pop machines that dispense bottles? I mean, real bottles, not plastic bottles. Tell me. I, re- I remember collecting bottles back when I was a child. Yeah. And we could sell them. Collect them mm-hmm. alongside the road because they had the deposit for them. But these are the soda pop machines that dispense the bottles. They might have a, a handle on the side that you put the money in, uh, usually a nickel or a dime. <laughs> and turn the handle and the, uh, the actual Coke bottle would dispense out of the machine. Number five, coffee shops with table side jukeboxes. There's actually still one of those um, in a little town up in northern Virginia. Along some of the little historic towns. It's actually it's a fifties almost a fifties style little <clears throat> little restaurant that does have the table side jukeboxes. Kind of a fun place. Number six <clears throat> Excuse me. How many home milk delivery in glass bottles with cardboard stoppers? How many remember that? Glass bottles with the milk that had the cardboard top. They had a little tab. You'd grab it, pull it, and open it up. How many remember those? Number seven. How many people remember party telephone lines? I par- remember those. Yeah. People. They had those up in the mountain. Absol- yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And 
and uh, whoever was the other party on your telephone line couldn't wait for you to get on it because if you were on it for more than five minutes somehow they knew i don't know what they spent all day just picking up the phone every five minutes and if you were there they'd pick it up and they click 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 they didn't want you being on the phone they didn't like you tying up the phone number eight how many people remember watching newsreels before the movie in the theater number nine and this was one that jogged my memory because I'd forgotten all about it. How many people remember P.F. Flyers? Tennis shoes, as a hint. P.F. Flyers. Number 10, how about Butch Wax? Who remembers Butch Wax? Number 11, telephone numbers with a, with a word prefix. For example, Olive 6971, or in my case, I remember it was Prescott 4578. Well, Mother said that here it was Ivanhoe. Mm -hmm. Number 12, how many remember Howdy Doody? The Howdy Doody Show, how many people remember that? How about number 13, how many people remember 45 records, 45 RPM? That, that one's pretty easy, D -D -D. I think most mm -hmm. people remember 45. How about number 14, S and H green stamps? Remember the S and H? I remember those. Yeah, My S and H. My grandmother collected green stamps. Yeah. You get them at the grocery store when you buy things and had the, had the books that you lick and taste the green stamps into, and you could turn the books in for, for products. It's kind of a rebate system of sorts. Number 15, metal ice trays with a lever an actual lever that you pull up to break the ice cubes free. How many people remember those? I remember one of those. Grandmother still got one in her refrigerator. Mm -hmm. She's got an old Kelvinator refrigerator and it's still got the ice cubes up in the little freezer part. You know, the little metal ice trays. Mm -hmm. Number 16. How many remember mimeograph paper? The mimeograph machines, the big tumbler, you know, and I think it when they first came out, they were hand-driven, and then they became electrified, and they made that funny sound as they went thunk ka thunk ka thunk ka went around, you know, making copies. But how many people remember mimeograph paper? How about number 17, blue flash bulbs? You know, around having been around Christmas, that might jog a memory, but the blue flash bulbs that would stick into the camera and then eject and remember this the cube the flash cubes that you stick into the camera and the ca and the cube had four uh, flashes and they would turn each time that you cocked the camera kind of an interesting thing wasn't it number 18 how many people remember roller skates that had a skate key remember that tt's boot no no how about <laughs> how about the last one Number 19, how many folks remember drive-in movie theaters? Yeah. Yeah. We still got one in there. There's still one not too far from here. Been, been there for the Starlight Drive-In. Been there forever. And it's actually a subject of recent intrigue because of alleged noise complaints and so forth about the theater. I personally think somebody had a... Some I had an eye on the property, so they were trying to cause trouble. Anyway, if you have your your, your questions and or if you have your answers posted about how many you remember, and here's the grading scale. If you remember zero to five, why you're just a whippersnapper. But if you remember six to fifteen, well, you're getting there. But if you remember 16 to 19, you are older than dirt. And, mm. by, and by the way, I remember 19. So that tells you where I am. Yeah, Gigi's boo, older than dirt. Uh, you just think you are. Well, now, Nancy, uh, there you go again. And anyhow, what else we got? We got anything else to... I think I'm about out. Gigi's boo, what you got? I'll have nothing. Don't have you nothing. know me, I leave all the hard work up to you. 
I just chitter chatter. You did well. You you did very well on that coverage of the New Year's Day lunch, and I hope lots of people have great great uh, experience with the, with their New Year's meal. And hopefully, how many how many of y'all make your New Year's resolutions? Anybody? I don't know. I I I, I don't personally. I don't either. On the Freakers Bowl show, Friday night, they have their uh, yearly predictions. And uh, that's where you go to uh, to log your predictions for the upcoming year. So, and that's uh, Friday nights, you know, 11 o'clock, 11 to 2, I think it is, Eastern Time. You might want to check that out if you haven't. Also, there's an archive. You can hear all the all the predictions for 2018. I have some predictions too, but I think I'm going to just keep them to myself because it's uh, uh, it's a work in progress and probably not uh, not consistent with the theme that we're trying to hold tonight. So, yeah, Grimner made a a, resol- a resolution to never make another resolution, and that's the only one that he's ever kept. That's that's a very reasonable one I think to make. But anyway, I think we're going to head on out of here, but prior to doing so, let me, uh, let me share a little something here, and it's something that I actually used earlier in the year at a special occasion. A gentleman by the name of Max Ehrman wrote something called Desiderato, and it went something like this. Go placidly amid the noise and the haste and remember what peace there may be in silence. It's my favorite. As far as possible, without surrender, be on good terms with all persons. Mm -hmm. Speak your truth quietly and clearly and listen to others, even the dull and the ignorant, for they too have their story. Avoid loud and aggressive persons, for they are vexatious to the spirit. Never compare yourself with others. You may become vain or bitter, for there will always be greater and lesser persons than yourself. Mm-hmm. Enjoy, enjoy your achievements as well as your plans. Keep interested in your careers, however humble they may be. It is a real possession in the changing fortunes of life. Exercise caution in your business affairs, for the world is full of trickery. But let this not blind you to what virtue there is. Many many people strive for high ideals, and everywhere life is full of heroism. Be yourselves, especially. Do not feign affection. Neither be cynical about love. For in the face of all aridity and disenchantment, disenchantment, enchantment. it is a, as perennial as the grass. Take kindly the counsel of years, gracefully surrendering the things of youth. Nurture strength of spirit to shield you in sudden misfortune. But do not distress yourself with dark imaginings, for many fears are born of fatigue and loneliness. Beyond wholesome discipline, be gentle with yourselves. You are children of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars. You have a right to be there. And whether or not it's clear to you, the universe is unfolding exactly as it should. Therefore, be at peace with God, whatever you conceive Him to be. And whatever your labors and aspirations and the noisy confusion of life Keep peace in your soul. With all its sham, drudgery, and broken dreams, it's still a beautiful world. Be cheerful. Strive to be happy. Gigi's woo, that's it. Yes. And like I said, I hope everybody has a wonderful new year. Happy and wonderful new year. It's been a pleasure to be here with y'all tonight. Even though we had all these ups and downs and trying to get on, it was pretty rough. Remember to always take the road less traveled. And number two, always remember that I love you big to my heart. Good night.
And thanks for listening. We'll catch you next week on the road less traveled. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.